Hello everyone, how are you going? And welcome back to some more Who's Who, Canada's little snippets of animal information. So we're starting off with a burrowing owl. Ah, just listen to that. Unlike most owls, which nest high up, the burrowing owl makes its home underground in burrows abandoned by other animals. Right. Once common to the Canadian prairies, this owl is now on Canada's list of wildlife species at risk. Okay. But researchers and landowners are working to change that. To learn more about the burrowing owl and how you can help protect Canada's wildlife, visit hww.ca. Now look, I certainly wasn't lying when I said that they are snippers, but for goodness sake, they just leave you so open-ended. I just want to know more about this because, well, I started out thinking it was going to be burrowing itself, but no, the fact that it occupies previously burrowed holes certainly makes sense. I do just want to check, however, the burrowing owl. Oh, I've never seen this before. <laughs> Well then, I guess I certainly have never heard that call either, which definitely makes sense, considering it is a small, long-legged owl found throughout open landscapes of North and South America. Okay then, so half of these animals that we get to see are just Canadian only, half of them are North American, and I guess this is just America. But hey, that is what I was wondering because they did mention it, so the conservation status is of least concern, but the population is apparently decreasing, and so that sounds like it's on kind of both ends of the stick. I don't really get how that works, but hey, if it's of least concern in terms of being extinct, then that's good news. Because for goodness sake, look at this little fella you know i understand why some people are a little bit freaked out by owls beat the big birds the kind of nocturnal doom ending owls but for goodness sake this guy is just so cute and small i mean i think it even said it's 150 grams which feathers included and everything like that isn't very much the big owls i think are kilos sometimes yeah look at that once again we have this Oh, I've never seen that before, so that must be new to Google. So thank you, Google. But here we go. Two kilos right there. Like I said, kilos compared to 150 grams. But hey, this is honestly just the perfect showcase of what nature is truly capable of. And honestly, also just how diverse it is. You know, like we saw with the snowy owl, this big majestic owl that just flows through the air and lives up in the trees. But no, this guy is just going to be way too small to kind of contest in those areas. And so you shrink yourself down and you go to ground, almost like a marsupial sized owl. I do want to quickly say that that this person whoever uploaded it be I don't know who they are but got in so early it was uploaded in October 2007 wow for goodness sake to be taking this I can only imagine from VHS and then digitizing it and then to have the brains to put it on YouTube back in 2007 that is years ahead of your time person ah, the sweet sounds the black capped chickadee black capped chickadees live all across Canada you usually know them when you hear them because they often say their name when they call. Chicka dee dee dee. <laughs> These little birds are great at keeping track of food. When there's lots to go around, they stash them away for later. Amazingly, they can remember a particular hiding place for up to 28 days. They even know which of the hidden items will give them the most energy. Wow, okay. Chickadees eat a mix of seeds and bugs, which makes them really helpful to have around. Of course, they're always happy having a little extra food handy, and you can help by setting up a winter feeder and by planting seeds for chickadee-friendly plants. Fair enough. And that's just a start. When you go to hww.ca, you'll learn more about the black-capped chickadee and get ideas on how to help protect Canada's wildlife. Uh, now I just feel as though I have to go to this website because that is now two in a row from I don't even know when but two in a row saying go to HWW. I have no idea how long this is going to take to load. Oh, it seems to be going. Oh, there we go. It did take a little while but it is still a website. That is good to know as well. Hinterlands, Who's Who, Wildlife, Wild Spaces, Multimedia. But let's just have a little search to see what these guys have on their own website about the black capped chickadee. Whoa, well to be honest they do have actually quite a lot of information that I don't particularly think I can sit here and read through the entire thing right this second. But like they were saying the fact that they can remember and I wasn't sure what the kind of unit of measurement was going to be but 28 days after just hiding their own food but then zooming in to see where these guys actually live we can see that yeah like they said and like I was saying compared to the last one these guys only really do live in I guess northern North America northern inhabited North America of which I certainly do not blame them for not wanting to go any higher than that for goodness sake for a little bird like that to be any higher would just be virtually impossible you would lose so much heat too quickly oh but hang on a second what is going on up in Canada to where the last one we had a burrowing owl and then this one digs its nest holes in soft or rotting wood like that is two in a row birds that generally aren't considered to be kind of hole dwelling animals to be making holes for themselves or at least occupying them but hey coming back to the video itself I always love it or I find it ridiculous when people haven't been too creative with the naming scheme of whatever it is or maybe it's not about being creative but they've been very literal in the meaning and the naming of it be this one chickadee it makes it sound chickadee so it is a chickadee oh what is going on here Google for goodness sake you have the North American animals and that's 
good. But as soon as I go to try and show what the kookaburra sounds like, to say that it sounds like kookaburra the word, it doesn't even have it. What? That's just not fair. Here we go. This is exactly what I wanted to show you. That is so loud. But look at these two go. Oh. Going for it. it is an incredible call like so many other birds but it is very unique as well and i mean if nothing else that was the perfect comparison to see how size just impacts the call you know you had a massive generally low note in comparison to the chickadee now yes of course not all of its notes are going to be crazy high but if i play the chickadee and then i play the kookaburra I think there's a pretty big difference there. But hey, once again, just an awesome little snippet that shows you what they eat, how big they are, and even just what that random bird call you might have been hearing all your life is. You go, oh, that's that guy. I just wish the video looked a little bit more like this, just so we could get them in all their glory. <laughs> Another bird, though. The robin. The robin is one bird that almost everyone recognizes. Its cheerful song usually signals the beginning of spring. Right. It nests in trees and bushes, and even That's occasionally in buildings. Three or four bluish-green eggs are incubated by the female for 12 days. Wow. The newborn robins are fed a diet of earthworms, caterpillars, moths, and other insects. The good stuff. It takes about 13 days for the young to fly, and during that period, many of them fall prey to cats, squirrels, and crows. Squirrels? The robin will vigorously defend its territory against other intruders. Even a stuffed robin. All right. Was... For more information about the robin, contact the Canadian Wildlife Service, Ottawa. Now, hearing that line at the end there does make me wonder if this one is even older than the previous ones because the previous ones directed you to a website. But this one says, call a landline, which does make me wonder after seeing this snippet on TV, how many people are going, hang on a second. I mean, it was nowhere near and long enough. I just need to call these guys up and learn more about this bird. I mean, to be fair, I should probably just give them a call myself considering he said something along the lines of everyone's somewhat familiar with this bird. But to be fair, I don't think I've ever had anything to do with the Robin. Either way, coming back to this part, I am always amazed or just reminded about how slow humans truly are to develop you know we develop even up to our 20s and 30s and just continue to age and develop after that these guys are incubated for 12 days and are flying 13 days after that i mean of course everything is just a relative scale as i can't imagine the robin is going to be living for 75 years and also i guess to be fair i have heard that humans are kind of technically a little bit pre-born because otherwise the baby's head would be too big to even be birthed in the first place but 12 days and then 13 days like these are just timelines that don't exist on human scale we do not even walk after like a year let alone fly after 12 days oh come on now what is going on google of course you have the american robin here we go let's listen to it and hey, lovely and of course you have it but not the kookaburra honestly do you have any australian birds do you have the magpie for goodness sake no great of course you don't oh for goodness sake they literally don't have any australian animals i guess that sums up the entire thing doesn't it but look that doesn't take away a single thing from the american robin which to be fair if he says everyone knows it certainly has to count for something The aristocrat among ducks is the canvasback, named after the drake's white back. They can be distinguished by their sloping foreheads and long bills. Like most ducks, to be fair. The hen's slate-brown coloring is more subdued than the striking plumage of her mate. Right. The canvasback breeds on small permanent marshes, but rarely along large stretches of open water. Once a common bird, the canvas back is now growing scarce. It is a hardy duck which arrives very early in spring, nests in the parklands of western Canada, and returns south when the waters of the north become frozen. <laughs> Funny that. For more information on the canvas back duck, why not contact the Canadian contact Wildlife Service in Ottawa? Yeah, of course, you got to contact them again because once again, this one is just a long time ago. I mean, I believe that all of these were uploaded by, yes, the same person 15 or 14 years ago. So this person was just on it. They knew what the kind of conservation was like. But geez, the fact that this duck is considered hardy and then is still an environmental concern, you certainly got to be wondering what's going on there. I mean, if we just have a look at the canvas back duck, yeah, hey, good looking images as well. And conservation status, once again, least concerned, but population decreasing. So once again, I mean, two minds about it. Is it? 
bad or is it good? Who knows? I guess it's still around. It doesn't say extinct, so that counts for something. Well, but hang on a second. I was wondering why speed was the first thing here, but for goodness sake, the fact that one has been clocked going 72 miles an hour, like 115k an hour, or most other ducks travel about 40 miles an hour. Even that's pretty darn fast. I don't know if I've seen ducks fly that fast. I mean, I am also quite confused as to how a larger body but a smaller wing makes it go faster. I would have thought it would be the opposite. You want big wings, small body, less surface area, more power, but obviously not if you can go 72 miles an hour. Fair play to a duck. I mean, like I was saying before, I do love the naming scheme for so many different animals, just how literal and how simple they can be, and I feel as though the canvas back duck certainly fits into the same pool. I mean, I guess it's not just white back duck or something like that, but to be fair, someone was probably just sailing down the river or I guess into the marsh and go, oh, canvas, white, canvas duck, uh, yeah, canvas duck, that'll do. And so look, even though this video has ended up being all about the birds, I always think that it's a great thing just to be seeing and hearing all these different animals in their natural habitats, whether that be Canada, North America, or the Americas in general, and whether you be from North America, the Americas, or the rest of the world. Either way, everyone should be trying to learn as much about the earth as possible, and hey, Hinterland Who's Who certainly sets us off on the right path. But anyway, in saying that, I reckon I'm just finally going to call it there, so thank you for watching this video. If you did enjoy it, feel free to do the algorithmic things down below. Also, if this is the first video of mine that you are watching, then make sure to go check out my other ones. Also, make sure to go check out all these original videos down in the description below, or hey, maybe you even just want to consider subscribing so that you don't miss another one of these in the future. But all in all, have a good one and see ya.